Valley Farm family, welcome back to another episode of The Farm. If you're new here, you are most welcome. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already and also turn your notification bells on not to miss out on any episodes of The Farm. And of course, to all our returning subscribers, thank you so much, really appreciate you guys. Thank you for being part of the family and thank you so much for appreciating all we are doing at Value Farm. Well guys, we are back at the farm. It has been really raining the whole morning, but the sun is finally out. We are really very excited. We are really happy that at least we have the, the, the rains, then we also have the sun coming up right here. So many rounds, so many updates for you that we shall be sharing here on this episode. And I hope you guys really enjoy it. Hope you guys like what we are doing and we really appreciate all those who have reached out and also appreciating the updates that we share with you guys because you know what we have to share we have to really inspire someone out there to also do something like this or maybe get motivated to start farming but there's a lot today that i'm going to be sharing with you there are so many updates of course that i'll be sharing you here and there just random stuff but I hope you enjoy and please, if you haven't subscribed, I don't know what you guys are really waiting for, please subscribe because you want to, to have a bigger family. We want you guys to share all this content with all your friends and family. Yeah, so without further ado, what should we start on? Right now, there is, um, we are spraying our goats because I told you that we do spray our goats three times or two times a week, depending on the seasons, depending on on the ticks that we have around so we make sure at least we spray these goats we spray all animals by the way including the sheep the goats that we have here and also the cows most of you have been asking us what tick sites that we are using to spray our animals but the major two that we are using are duo dip then also the cyper tick that's what we are using with try to alternate but we also have others that we are using that i will definitely show you guys later on in the video if we have some of the bottles still inside there inside our store i will share with you guys so that you can see exactly what we are using because with the tick sites by the way sometimes they become resistant so you have to keep changing them depending on how the the ticks can come onto the animals so when you realize that the ticks are not really dying very fast or maybe your goats are getting so many ticks more often then you need to also change so we keep changing by the way but let me take you guys that other side so that i can show you what is actually happening then we see how the day goes come let's go <laughs> yeah feeding time guys so we are right here with our grasses. I was helping my colleague bring it right here. So this is the brocaria grass that we cut. We really get a, a good amount of them because this is going to be for the South African goats that are going to remain here. We've already cut our shrub that side, as you can see, some of the leaves that we get from the bushes because it's really rainy season right now. So we have at least good grasses around but this one here these are some of the nutritious grasses that we planted so we planted this some few months ago and the beauty about the brocaria grass is it keeps growing so when whenever you cut it it regrows so when you cut it short it still regrows that is the beauty about it so the lab lab is also sprouting out which is really very good that we are going to be using so we have this then we also have the, the um, supernapia grass that we are going to be getting later on isn't it Oh, we already have it. He had already cut it, by the way. So the supernapia is already here. He has already brought it. The brocaria is already there. So we are just putting it, we are just setting everything up so that when these other goats are going out in the field, at least these South African goats have something to eat. Yeah, you can remove it. Thank you so much. So in the morning, what he really does, he has to go to the field pick up then come we have our bicycle right here <laughs> that we are always using <laughs> that we are using huh? you enjoy <laughs> eh? at least you enjoy why why do you enjoy and it makes work easy easy for okay for you to collect yes. yeah that is really so nice but really appreciate you know our guys here who have been with us for a long time he has been very, very hard working, by the way, whereby they know what to do at the right time, at the right place. So 
this is really very very nice so guys let's go and see the spraying of the goats thank you so much eh? not to hawaii so we also fixed our gate right here because it was falling previously you know with farming you have to do more of repairs more often as long as you realize that the doors are getting broken you need to fix before it gets worse because the more it gets worse you'll not be able to keep the animals in safe and also in place so we at least repaired and the carpenter that we brought this time around was a genius check how this gate looks like it's really very good and it's safe enough and it's going to last us for at least some time as well so let's go inside there and we see what is actually happening guys guys so i also wanted to share with you guys for especially new farmers out there if you're starting your goat farm and you're really wondering how am i going to spray my goats what am i going to use and all that so this is a knapsack that you can use you can invest in of course in the beginning some people may use these other normal sprayers but it's not effective because then the normal sprayers do not really penetrate deep into the skins of the goats but if that's what you have well and good but it's advisable for you to use a knapsack like this one here you can get this around container village so most people asked me previously i think when i posted on um on tiktok or instagram some of you are asking where we bought this knapsack from we just got them from container village that's where we bought it from for the pricing i'm not sure about that because it's some time back and remember the prices keep changing as well so i wanted to share with you this so that you can know exactly what you have to do and how you're going to go about it so this one is advisable because when you spray your animals when you spray your goats you spray your sheep and cows it really penetrates deep to the skin and also when the goats have the ticks it can remove it easily when you use this knapsack because the pressure from this sprayer right here is much stronger so that's why we invested in something like this it's quite pricey but it is very effective as well so for those who are really new to the channel and of course we've never seen what we actually do and how we mix our tick sides we have this knapsack where we mix water and also the curry side here that we are using so we put 25 liters of water then we put 40 mils of the acaricide so there's different acaricides that we use right here like this one here the norotraz then we also have the duo dip we have the cypatic then we also have the um, malbitras here alpha po those are all different acaricides that we are using here so what like i told you already that you keep changing because the more you change the more effective it is because remember these things also are very stubborn if you use it more often it becomes more resistant it doesn't even remove the ticks from the goats or from the cows so you keep changing you keep you know changing them more often so when you put the 40 mils inside here you just measure it then you pour it inside right here there is a like a sieve as you can see there's a, a sieve there so you just pour that then it gets inside this other measuring gauge the measuring gauge remains inside do not put it aside leave it inside then you cover once you cover it of course with your water and your acaricide inside when you've measured properly you have to mix it shake it a little bit so that it can mix properly so once you do that that's when you wait for it a little bit you know to mix up properly then you have to turn it on and by the way before even we turn it on it also has a fuel tank so you have to make sure that it's filled with some fuel in here so this other part here has the fuel that we always put inside so this is already with fuel that we've been using to spray so you might be wondering which kind of fuel we put in the petrol in here you have to make sure that at least fuel or the petrol is always there 
So guys, because of the lighting, we had to change position, but David is also going to demonstrate for us how we can turn on the pressure on the knapsack so that we can start the spraying. Because we want to be practical, guys. We want to show you how these things operate. So, David, so you help me turn on the, on the spark right here. So that is the... Yes, guys, you see, you've seen what has been happening. So exactly, Dr. David already showed us how you can start it. You adjust using this other thing, this other handle right here. Then you keep adjusting till the pressure gets on and also forms like a, like a mist-like mist -like form. That's when you're good to go to spray. So when you do that, that means it will penetrate to the skin of the goats and the ticks will definitely get out spray effective get out <laughs> yes so for the maintenance check the fuel gauge check the spark plug right here so that the it can operate properly it can ignite properly then you also have to you know make sure that this thing this machine right here is really well handled do your servicing more often so that it doesn't really fail you. Then also for the protective gear that you need to always give to your workers or someone who is going to operate this machine, they have to have protective gears. They have to have the gloves. They have, this is just for demonstration purposes. That's why you're seeing I'm not having anything right here. And everyone is really busy right now. I couldn't get them to show you exactly what I'm talking about. But if I get a clip, I'll definitely share with you so that you can see what our our people right here use so we have the glove for the i mean the mask for the nose then we also have for the eyes then we have the gloves then of course they have to wear their gum boots as well with an overall so they have to be fully dressed up that's how it's supposed to be for their own protection as well because these are you know these are tick sides and chemicals that are really harmful to humans as well so you have to be very careful when you're handling such issues, such things, such machines. Right now here, because of this demonstration, I have to go and wash my hands properly because I've been handling this. I've been handling the machine as well. I've not sprayed, so that's why I couldn't wear the protective gear here. But when you go and purchase, when you purchase this machine, make sure you, put, you also purchase the protective gears for your workers out there. I just wanted to share with you this so that you at least know exactly, not to always just tell you, oh, we spray with this and that, but you don't know how you can go about it. So it's always advisable, guys. Be knowledgeable with what you buy at your farm, do your research properly, and also know where to get these machineries. There are so many fake and duplicates of machineries that you get out there, but make sure that you go to the right places, do your research, ask from different farmers so that they can also advise you where to go, specific shops that you can definitely go to. But I really appreciate you guys for watching this up to this point. We are still doing our rounds. The goats have already gone outside to graze. Now we are remaining here with the little kids at the farm. Then of course the South Africans that we are going to release already this other side. We've already put for them some hay because they also love the hay by the way. These are exotic breeds. So we have put for their hay in the troughs. Then we also have some other grasses that side that I'm going to show you shortly here. The hay in these other two troughs. Then we have the brocaria right there. Then we also have the sugar napier right there. So whatever they choose, that's what they go with. Then of course these kids right here that are remaining behind love the shrub as well. So they are really eating the shrub right there. Then we also have my other colleague that side preparing the water points so that the goats have water as well. Because 
for this particular goats right here, these kids and the exotic ones, they already had their first meal, which is the grain. We always give them some grain inside there. So for those who have been watching these videos for so long, you know what I'm talking about. But if you're new to the channel, please go watch other episodes so that you can catch up, so that you can also be familiar with what I'm talking about. Because, you know, we always try our best to give and feed, give proper feeding to these goats. Because with goat farming, you have to be sure that you have the right breeds, proper housing, and proper feeding. That's what you can definitely have at your farm for you to prosper, for you to make profits from goat farming and to be a happy farmer. Yeah, other goats are other, the other side. I don't know whether you can be able to see. They're already going to the field. Yeah, so that is basically it because the sun is really now out. They need to go out and at least feed before the rains come down. Anytime from now, the rain is here because the clouds are changing. This is rainy season. We are happy. I'm not complaining. Yes. So that is it basically guys. I have other updates. Let, let me show you guys the lab lab guys. It has started growing by the way surprisingly. Let me show you guys. Come. Come I show you then we shall see something else we can look at today. Let's go. We are right here. Of course I wanted to show you the lab lab. How it's growing. If you watched our previous episodes, we told you about the nutritious grasses that we are planting and Lab Lab is one of them. So it is right here. It has started sprouting out and it's really amazing that at least the rains are still here. So we have really high chances that it's really going to grow very well. As you can see, this whole field up to that side is planted with the Lab Lab and it is good progress so far. We just pray that it grows as it looks like. Promising. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just wanted to show you that I wanted to go check other things as we move. We are right here. Today is the day that we are going to do more of the demonstration, guys. Today we are setting up our fly trap, as you can see. This is one of it that we brought from South Africa. Rafael brought this from South Africa. It was really amazing because we had already used so many things to trap the flies at the farm. Because with any other farming, farmers know this. In farms, especially there are just some seasons whereby flies are just at the farm fly seasons yeah. that's what i should really say so we've been trying to fight the flies here and there just all over the compound to make sure that at least we we prevent them not to kill all of them but at least prevent some of them from getting too much in the environment so we brought some some traps i think there were books that we bought from container village one of the places that we buy from our staff our farm items it worked, but it wasn't that very effective as much. It could just trap a few flies, then that was it. And it would work just for a few days and it no longer traps the flies. So when Grafton went to South Africa, he brought for us some different types of fly traps. We have this, this ones right here, then we also have another tip just right there. David can show us. Yeah, so there's like a, a strip that you remove, then you just put it on the walls yeah that's how you do it so it is round it's just like a whole strip that you r remove from that strip and it's sticky so grafton fortunately bought for us this thank you so much grafton thank you because this is something that we are going to try as well we've already used the strips and they're working perfectly yeah. the flies are really reduced we are maintaining the environment, but at least when it's too much, you have to reduce. <laughs> Bear with us about this. But now for this one here, we are just going to set it up. I just wanted to do this with you guys on camera so that we can learn together. We have already read the instructions. This is from South Africa. I've never used it before personally. I don't know whether David has used it before. Yeah. Have you used it before? Yeah. Okay, that is even well and good. So 
we have already read the instructions properly how we are going to set it up mm -hmm. then we also have this david what is that this is the bait mm. this is now like uh the content that is used to capture the flies they mm. feed on these and that's when they fall down dead or that's how it works by controlling the flies this mm. is the bait okay that's nice so guys let's unbox and also get started hmm? let's do this I'm excited because I'm doing this with you guys so that we can learn together. Yes, huh? Okay, I'm just... Let me be reading instructions right here good enough instructions are just behind yeah. hey for those who didn't see what it is it's an outdoor it's an outdoor fly, fly trap. trap read your home of flies so this can be used even i think in homes different areas that you need to use it's a red top fly catchers this is by the way non-sponsored it's not a sponsored video we're just doing this to share with you mm -hmm. so this company is not sponsored us we are trying it out to see and we shall give you feedback on it for this other tip it worked properly we are happy about it so they're saying you have to twist the turret and lift to remove it so you twist this other thing okay you've removed it yeah you have to remove it okay mm. then empty the contents of the fly bait circuit into the fly trap hey it already has even yeah it comes with this it comes with this one already so this is i think an extra okay nice so we have to open this yeah and then empty it Emp the put it inside there be careful, hmm? be, careful. Hey! <coughs> be careful with that with this yeah so this is how it looks like so this is the turret, guys. Just a minute. Oh, so we have to be showing them, be showing them what you're doing. So, uh, this, where, this is now the, the mesh. Mm. It's open. Come, it's open. Yeah, this hole. Oh, the thing is open right here. Mm. Yeah, that is true, guys. Mm. So this mesh here is already open. So let's just follow the instructions step by step so that we can even be faster. Mm -hmm. So we are supposed to pour this inside, David. Fly bait. So we are putting the fly bait inside here. Ah, we have to throw it somewhere, not our chickens to eat. Because we have chickens on free range. So we have to make sure. Then um add a little of lukewarm water. Mm -hmm. Use algae free mm. water. Preferably soft water. If it is milky, allow it to settle for 24 hours. So we have our water here. Mm. It's lukewarm. Lukewarm means it's not hot, it's not cold. Yeah. It's so just it's a yeah. little warm then uh it's clean water yeah soft water do you have to measure it's one liter already. one liter already we measured it okay yeah. and then what do i hold it it's heavy do i hold from here no you did it, might, it will fall eh? might fall down okay let me just hold it let me so they said if the water is milky like if it is not clear let it settle for, for 24, 24 hours, hours yes yeah. Then um, ensure, ensure that the hole at the apex of the, of the mesh comes of the, is open. Yeah, the hole you are talking about is this. Exactly. Then after that, replace the turret by fitting the lungs of the turret into the notch in the cover dish. So you have to fix it inside. Yeah. Oh, nice. It's fitting properly. It's now okay. It's now okay. Uh huh. Then um, hang the fly catcher outside in a suitable position 
with sufficient, with sufficient sunlight. sunlight. Okay. Because I'm seeing they're telling us to hang this one here. Yeah, like so this. we use this as the this is the point where we are going to hang it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Help it get suspended. Suspended. So how are flies going to get inside? The they are going to go through this mesh, then fall inside. Yeah. Because I remember reading somewhere that you have to empty it within three to four days. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that is really nice. So that is basically, guys. I'm seeing flies trying to get inside. Hey. Then it's not. A, it's not. An, it just. It is not hazardous to the environment. Mm. You can pour it in your garden and dispose it in. A, if you have a kitchen garden, you can dispose it over there. It has no hazards to the environment. Okay. Yeah. So, when you're going to empty it. Yeah. yeah. It's more it's organic. More organic. Yeah. And even your plants will grow faster. Mm. <laughs> we hang it somewhere there. Then after a few days, I'll give you guys an update on how it is, whether it is really working, whether it really trapped the flies as well, and the whole process, exactly. Then when we are going to empty it, if we get a chance and we are still here, we shall empty this with you so that you can know exactly how it goes about. But this was were just extra baits. Let me show you guys. So that is it. So guys, let's go, David. Let's go take this, the other side. just wanted to bring for you guys the fly trap here because we're just using this as an example we want to see how it's going to work whether it's going to help us in this section here but it's just an update we just wanted to demonstrate to you as well if someone out there is also suffering or maybe have issues with the flies you could try those traps if you're in south africa they're available for you in uganda i don't know whether the same traps are right here but we had different is it trap books that we had that we were using the yellow books yeah that's what i remember i don't remember the specific name of those traps but we used to get them from container village for those in uganda for those specific ones we shall give you feedback when we see how it is operating and how it's working but guys let's go to a different section so that we can see what is actually happening right here at the farm guys let's go Well guys, we are right here. Yeah, I just wanted to show you guys the progress of the maze. I remember the time that we moved around and I showed you the progress of how it was growing. This time round, I'm really super excited. Like at least this time, we made sure the maze is growing healthy. We've done our best this time round at least. That, <laughs> as you can see how it is, on the background, this other side, and at least we planted enough of it that we are not going to really suffer for the feeds. Because why we planted the maize is for, for the feeds, feeding the pigs and also the goats as well, then also our poultry. So we are right here. I just wanted to show you this other progress. What is remaining here right now, we are going to do the weeding. There is a lot of land that we are supposed to weed right here because the maize is quite a lot. It has really grown so well. I just wanted to share with you guys this progress. The super napia is on the other side. I wanted to take you guys that other side as well so that you can see the progress. I promised to show you guys the other time, but we didn't manage. So we have been weeding the super napia and I want to see the progress so far. The last time I was there, we had just planted it. So I've never really gone to see how it's growing. So 
Let me take you guys along with me so that we can see how the supernape is growing, whether the weeding has really been done properly, because you know what? When you send people to go weed, sometimes they do a good job, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they cut corners. So you have to make sure that they do their thing right in the right way. So let's go guys so that I can show you how it looks like. Guys, let's go. Right here, the super nap here is uh, growing as you can see here. So, part of it is really growing. I can see some bits right here. We have, you know, it's really growing so well so far. And the weeding has already been started. We have up to the other side of the farm. Yeah, most of it has actually grown which I'm excited about. Yeah. I don't know why they didn't clear this hill here. Oh, we had some sugar nap here there as well. But this is supposed to be cleared then. Let me see. Mm, it's actually coming up so well. It's just because it's still on the lower ground so you can't see it properly but it is actually growing so we are still weeding it wow yeah it is okay so far not so bad we still have a section that side that needs to be weeded so hope it can be done as soon as possible yeah i just wanted to show you this we still have this other napier grass we planted here Wow. So guys, let's go and check on the other goats. I just wanted to see the progress of this napier, sugar napier, but they're doing a good job. At least they've, they've already tried to weed it. Well guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys to watch this video up to this point. I appreciate you so much. I really didn't want to make this video so long. I appreciate all your love and support, but if you haven't already checked out our social media platforms, please go check out on Instagram, it is Value Farm UG, Facebook, Value Farm, TikTok, Value Farm, go see behind the scenes and also learn something or even get inspired. But we love you all, tell a friend to tell a friend. Till next time, bye.